Okay, with Dundalk head coach Vinnie Perth after the first leg of tonight's Champions Cup uh, clash. New competition, Vin, new stadium. Thoughts on the game? Yeah, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a fantastic venue. Uh, one of the most enjoyable games I've been involved all season. Not in the sense of being relaxed, but in the sense of I felt there was, there was, something, there was an edge at it. And um, we learned loads tonight. Really impressed by the venue. Probably the best, for me, it's the best stadium in the, in, in the island. And, um, albeit the Aviva, from a football point of view, is bigger than that, but that was that's a tremendous venue, and um, I suppose the players got a huge lift when they turned up tonight. And what's been a difficult week, and uh, by the first ten minutes, I thought, thought we dominated the ball, and I'm probably unlucky not to, to win the game. Um, you said you touched on the press conference after a difficult week. Um, obviously, hard picking the players up, but. Managed to do that, and then arriving here tonight, you said everybody everybody wanted to be out there as soon as they get the ground. Yeah, for the first time, you know, since I've ever been at this club, we, we didn't pick the team until we got here. Uh, we just tried something a little bit different and kept the players, not guessing, but just kept them motivated over yesterday and, and last night. So the problem was, the only player I told, Sean Gannon, has had a, a hamstring injury over the last couple of weeks, and um, he's the only one that sort of knew. And then we got to the ground, and he wanted to play, and he, he came, you know, he said, oh, let me play, let me play. So uh, the, the players were inspired by that. And the only mistake I made was that there was a huge disappointment that they weren't in the team. But I mean that in, you know, in, in the sense of just as soon as you're into the team, everyone was together again and all that stuff. So no, it was a brilliant night. And um, it, it was probably great that we came to such a good stadium because it gave us such a boost of what's been a difficult week. Yeah. Um, it said itself a slow start, grew into the game. Um, Goal from Dan Kelly in the second half. Also, you know, probably came closest to scoring the second goal before then Andy Ball hit in the bar and then right the death with Georgie Kelly as well. Um, you must have been pleased with the way that the game progressed. Yeah, I, I, we'd stuff to fix at half time and um, we, we felt that we'd hurt them in, in the wide areas um, from watching them. And uh, so that's why we, we, we changed the two fullbacks and two wingers um, to give us energy. And the, to be fair, the lads coming in hadn't played loads, so it probably took them a while, Bar Daniel, to get going. But once they got going, we, we sort of, we, again, we took over, dominated the ball and could use it a little bit better at times. Um, and that's what we said at half time more forward passes, forward passes. Um, and the forward passes worked in the second half to, to a point. We, we got in a couple of times, and as I said, they were unlucky not to win. Yeah, um, lovely finish from Dan Kelly's 15th goal of the season. It's a great return from both of our wide players. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and, and John Mountain before his injury was on eight, and uh, so that's curtailed him. That's something we've worked on this year as our wild players adding goals to the game. Uh, Daniel, Daniel is a really, really a rough diamond who two years ago was playing non-league football, and I think um, you know the season he, he's had is really going to stand to him. Fifteen goals, you said, and um, real, um, real, a lot of learning still to do, but he, he's done a wonderful uh, job this season and learned how to be a full-time footballer. And you know the future's bright. We've a lot of players like that, sort of breaking through and, and making a name for themselves. And Daniel is one of them. And Daniel Cleary is another example. So uh, when you see these players, you know, kicking on the older players, it's it's brilliant. Um, Jordan Flores, 90 minutes under his belt tonight. He must be disappointed that the close season's come around now. He, he probably keep, wants to keep going. Yeah, it's disappointing the season for Jordan in terms of the way the injuries have gone against them, but. Again, he's got that ability in his forward, when he does make forward passes, he's got that ability to open up doors and, and pick out great passes. And I thought he was I thought he was excellent uh, once once he got his, his second legs after the, the game, so I thought he was really good. Um, final question, obviously been a long season, but um Ty finally poised now, delicately poised, chance for one final uh, final match at Oriol to one last chance for the fans to come out and cheer this team on this season. Yeah, look I, I don't know I don't know what the right word is, but I, I just hope that we get I, I can't demand I just hope we have a huge crowd on Monday obviously the two stadiums are, are poles apart but at the same time I think it's an opportunity to create an atmosphere a good atmosphere a welcoming atmosphere to Linfield they were very welcoming to us and uh, hopefully we can, we can enjoy it make it a special occasion there's a trophy to be won and the players could do with the supporters sticking by them again for one, one, more, uh, one more night and we can we can enjoy it and, and hopefully lift another trophy by season's end and finish as um, champions and remind people we're champions of Ireland to be proud of us, say it loud and sing it loud on Monday night. That's what really we need to do. I said, cheers, Vin. Thanks for that. Thank you. All right.